Today's Morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors. Welcome to St. Isidore's. Today we celebrate Epiphany. To begin, let's recognize God's presence in each other by welcoming those around us. To the day, to conscience. With full heart and full voice, let's begin our celebration by singing together number 107, We Three Kings. Number one zero seven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather this morning to celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany of the Lord Jesus Christ, Matthew in his Gospel and the story today points out that Jesus came not just to save the Jewish people, but to save the people of all nations. And so we pause and give thanks to God for calling us to be his disciples, Realizing we are sinners, we ask him for pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand the right hand of the father have mercy on us glory to god God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we, who know you already in faith, may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, 
Darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come, sons come from afar, and your daughters are in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Epha, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Seba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage, all nations shall serve him. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you, for he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Lord, every nation on earth will adore A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, 
as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you, to you o lord when jesus was born in bethlehem of judea in the days of king herod behold magi from the east arrived in jerusalem saying where is the newborn king of the jews we saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage when king herod heard this he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written throughout the prof through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany where Jesus was revealed to the Magi, um, symbolizing all the peoples of the world. Very often Jesus taught in parables or stories. We all like to hear a good story. And there's a story about um, the wise men, uh, we call them wise men because they put aside their busy schedules when in search of the child Jesus. We know their names as Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar. But there's a story about the fourth wise men. Maybe some of you have heard it, but I think it has a powerful lesson, lesson for all of us to think about. His name, the fourth wise man, was called Artaban. And he and the other um, magi had agreed a long time ago that whenever they would witness a new star, uh, in the skies, they would get together and go together and bring uh, that person. They always believed a new star was a symbol of a new current king being born. They would go together and bring him gifts. And so a great star appeared in the west about the time that Jesus was born. And so um, the Magi began to pack their camels and get ready. They had agreed to meet at a certain uh, rendezvous point. And so Arban packed up his camel and got his gear all ready for the trip. And he packed aside three special jewels that he wanted to give to the, the newborn king, a ruby, a pearl, and a diamond. 
It was about two days' journey to the rendezvous point, and he started off early in the morning, and late in the afternoon in the first day's journey, he passed a little hut alongside of the trail, and as he was going by, he heard somebody groaning, and as if they were in terrible pain. And so he stopped, and he propped the door open, and there he saw an elderly gentleman, very, very sick, an awful lot of pain. And uh, Artaban was kind of uh, wondering what to do. Um, the man obviously needed help, he was in terrible pain. Um, to take him back to his hometown, uh, to his doctor and to a hospital of some sort, um, he would miss out on meeting the, his fellow uh, companions at the rendezvous point. Um, but finally he decided he better take the man back. So he took him back. Uh, when he got there, he found a physician or doctor, and of course they had to pay expenses. So he uh, decided finally to uh, give the doctor the, um, the pearl. He figured it would cover most of the man's expenses, and he told the doctor, if you need more, when I get back, I'll pay you. And then he set out on this journey. He was already a day behind. And by the time he reached the rendezvous point, the others had already met and had been on their way. And so Artaban started across a journey, a very perilous journey on your own. Um, very often he lost his way, and it took him almost two years uh, to finally get to, Beth to Jerusalem, and then he went on to Bethlehem. When he arrived in Bethlehem, it was a place of, of chaos and people yelling and screaming, soldiers running around with bloody swords. Uh, women were holding their dead child and mourning and wailing. And uh, he saw one young mother running with her son to a hut and a soldier right behind her, a ways behind her. And so Artaban stopped, jumped in front of the door and stopped the soldier and said, what's going on? What's happening here today? Such chaos. And the soldier told him that Herod had told them to kill every infant boy or boy under age, age two in Bethlehem, and they were carrying out that order. Well, Audubon realized that soldiers didn't get paid very well, and so he thought, maybe, maybe I can save this poor child inside. So he pulled out his, uh, his uh, ruby and offered it to the soldier. He knew it was worth more than he'd receive in a year's pay. And he told the soldier, if you accept this, you have to tell your fellow soldiers that there's nobody in this house. And the soldier agreed to do that. So he gave, uh, Artaban gave him the, the ruby. He felt kind of badly because now he only had one, one gift left to the newborn king, but he, he felt he had to do what he did. And then searching uh, for the child, the newborn king, um, eventually he learned that he and his parents had headed down to Egypt. So again, another long journey down to Egypt. Uh, I had to stop along the way to work for a while to make, get money to continue to support his journey and searched all over uh, in uh, Egypt. And finally, um, after a long time, uh, he got some information that the child he was looking for and his parents apparently had gone back to Palestine, had gone up to uh, to Nazareth or somewhere in it there. So again, he made a long journey up there and the years are passing by. Every now and then he had to stop to replenish his supplies and work for a while to do so. And after searching all over Nazareth, um, again, he was always uh, late and behind time. He had learned that uh, the man had gone down to, uh, to Jerusalem. So he headed down to Jerusalem Years had passed. He got there uh, during the piece of, Feast of Passover. The city was overgrown with over two million people, tourists coming from all over the country for the great holiday. And the, the, every place was uh, packed, people all over the place. And he, uh, as he was going through the crowd, he saw quite a commotion. And he saw uh, soldiers uh, separating the crowds and three uh, men were condemned to be crucified. They were carrying their crosses, and from a distance, Artaban observed uh, one of them especially had been terribly beaten, uh, covered with blood, crown of thorns on his head, and just treating mercilessly. And he was thinking, maybe in some way, I still have my diamond, maybe I can 
persuade the soldiers of nothing else to be less cruel to him in some way he is suffering in pain. Started to start a following, but the, the, the streets were so crowded with people, progress was very slow, and finally he uh, looked up on the hill and he saw that it was already too late for him to save this poor man. He was already hanging on a cross and suffering excruciating pain. But he thought, maybe in some way I can, can help him. And as he was heading that way, it grew, the sky became very dark, and uh, then there was a violent earthquake. And some of the buildings were collapsing, and um, they were covered with the heavy tile. And one of the tiles uh, slipped off of the roof, and it struck, um, well, before this happened, as Artaban is making his way uh, toward the hill where the men were crucified, he came upon a house where two big strong men came dragging a young teenage girl out of the house. She was screaming and yelling. Her parents were crying and shouting too. And Artaban stopped and asked what was going on. And they explained that uh, the parents of the daughter owed their, their master an awful lot of money. He couldn't pay the debt. So they were supposed to take the daughter, the girl and sell her as a slave. And she was yelling and screaming, and so were the parents. And Artaban thought, well, maybe I can save her. But if I do, I won't have any way to help the man who had been crucified. Um, but after some thought, he decided to let the girl go. So he offered the diamond to the, the two henchmen, and they were very pleased. They accepted it was more than the, the master was owed, and they'd get a cut of that. And so um, the girl was released. And uh, Artaban now realized he had nothing he could do for the man who had been crucified with the crown of thorns, but perhaps in some small way he could comfort him. And so he started heading up the hill. And about that time, the darkness came and the, uh, the earthquake came and one of the heavy tiles on the roof came falling down and struck Artaban on the head, injuring a severe, severe injury. And he was knocked to the ground and as he was uh, dying, he kind of looked toward the hill, and he thought he heard the man who was crowned with thorns saying, Artaban, whatever you did to the least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. Thank you. And with that, Artaban closed his eyes and had a smile on his face as he died. It's a story. It didn't really happen, but I think it has a powerful lesson. One of the ways we show our love for Jesus is by reflecting that love to those around us. Whatever we do to the least of our brothers and sisters, Jesus told us, you do unto me. And so every day, every one of us is confronted with a decision to do something special for the Lord by performing some act of kindness to somebody around us. Maybe you can offer somebody at work a word of praise or a compliment or um, a lending ear for a minute or two as they share their story or uh, a pat on the back, or some, some simple act of kindness, or dropping in to visit an elderly person in the nursing home or confined to their own homes, um, or sending somebody a card or a letter or a phone call. In so many ways, we can make somebody else's day, uh, day with just a word of kindness or a simple moment of our time. And in this way, we're showing our love for the Lord. So that's something for all to think about as we enter this new year and to try to do every day in some small way. And then also we can learn a, a lesson from Caspar, Malchio, and Baltasar, who are willing to go on a long journey, putting aside their busy lives to honor the newborn king. Our biggest problem, I think, for all of us is we're super busy with too many things. And sometimes, as a result, we don't take time to get to know the Lord in a deeper way. And yet, when you stop and think about it, the only thing that really matters in our life is the relationship we have with Jesus. And one day, maybe sooner than we expect, we're going to be called from this life to give an account of our life and uh, to share with him um, how we've tried to deepen our relationship with him. Uh, and so there's something for us to think about. We need to take time for prayer each day. We need to make it a priority. Perhaps the best thing to do is to make it early in the morning and say, this is part of what I'm going to do when I get up. Spend 10 or 15 minutes in prayer, maybe just talking to Jesus or maybe just being quiet and listening to him 
or maybe reading just a simple passage from the gospel and reflect upon it, and then throughout the day, from time to time, being aware of his presence, thanking him for his presence or asking for his help, or just, um, just being aware of his presence with us. But we need to do that. We need to do that every day. Or one day, when our life is coming to an end, um, we'll rise almost too late. We didn't spend a, life, a lot of time de developing a relationship with the Lord Jesus. And as a result, he's hardly going to recognize us. And uh, the results may be not too pleasant for us. So we need to think about that. We ask the Magi, whoever they were, to pray for us that we will realize what's really important in life and find time each day then to deepen our relationship with the Lord Jesus. So when that final day comes, he will recognize us and will welcome us into the joys of his kingdom in heaven. So think about it often and pray about it. And give thanks and praise to the Lord for all he has done for you. But stand and profess our faith by praying the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Oh God, our Heavenly Spotter, help us to imitate the example of the, the Magi. Help us be truly wise in finding time each day to deepen our relationship with your Son, Jesus. For in reality, it's the only religion, the relationship which really matters for all eternity. So grant us this story and all the favors we ask in Jesus' name. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Archbishop George Lucas, and for all parishioners throughout the Archdiocese of Omaha, that we may grow in our love of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the innocent victims of war in Gaza and in Israel, and Russia and the Ukraine, that peace may soon come to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people in Japan whose lives have been upset by the earthquake and tsunamis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially for Judy Abaglin, Carol Bout, Ryan Hendricks, John Lippert, Bridget McPhillips, Father Vernon Ulmer, Christopher Pedraza, Jerry Ronker, and Karen Simic, that they may experience the healing presence of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Diane German Anderson, Clara Meisenberg, and Jim Wrigley, that they may share in Christ's risen glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who were buried from St. Isidore's Church this past year, and for all of our loved ones who have died in the past year, that they may know the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For more vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray for Charles and Dolores McPhillips, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for all of our unspoken needs and intentions. Let us pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Heavenly Father, please grant us these and all our needs, for which we pray to you today in Jesus' name, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have a second collection today. Uh, please be seated. Um, for the uh, support our seminarians. Way back when, in the ancient times, uh, I was able to work all summer, and with the help of my parents, I paid my own way. Today, it costs about $60,000 a year to support our seminarians, and they're required to work in parishes throughout the summer where they don't really receive a salary. And as a result, the diocese sort of underwrites the cost. And so this is one way we can promote uh, vocations by supporting our seminarians. If you're not prepared to make a donation today, you can always drop it in the basket or drop it by the rectory at some other time. As the gifts and table are being prepared, please join in singing number 105, it came upon a midnight clear, number 105. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which are united not gold, frankincense, or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and perceived, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us 
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as the light for all nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, he made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. Who comes in the name of the Lord? Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and burning sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you alone. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, whether they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in the hope of health and well-being, and paying homage to you, their eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, eternal with you in glory, appeared in the human body, truly sharing our flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and Son, and Son of God, and Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, and Andrew, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be, def be defended by their protecting help. And therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count them in the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased with God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it a spiritual and acceptable, let it become for us the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and proclaim your resurrection. 
And therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as you once were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hand of your holy angel to your altar and high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, and be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant who have gone before us, mark the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, to those sinners who hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Isidore, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon to Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The blood of Christ. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As a community, we come to receive the Lord. Please sing number 112. The first Noel, number 112.
Will those who take communion of the sick please come forward? We have a many for one body. Go now to the members of our parish family who cannot be with us today. Go in our name and with our blessing, and may the Lord Jesus be with you as you go on your way. And thank you for going. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere the true affection, the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join together in praying for the successful completion of our Prairie Center. Loving Father, Father we come to you in adoration. May our hearts be open to your guidance on this journey. You have bestowed in your church community the gift to openly worship and praise your name. We humbly give thanks for the opportunity to serve you with our gifts and talents. Jesus, pour out your Holy Spirit as we gather in prayer to build a faithful parish center for all generations. Most sacred heart of Jesus, pray for us. Blessed Virgin Mary, pray for us. Saint Isidore, pray for us. The funeral for um, Diane Anderson will be, I think on Saturday, I would presume around 10 o'clock. The vigil no doubt here in church on Friday night. Eternal rest granted to her, O Lord. Let the perpetual life shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. I won't be here next weekend. I'll be doing an engaged encounter weekend in Norfolk, Saturday and Sunday. Father Gondrigary will be covering all the masses here. So don't go around spreading the word that I died or that I'm very sick. I'm just on a, a, a weekend. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's go forth singing, number 82, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Today's morning Mass is brought to you in part by these sponsors.